Democratic Senator Chris Coons. Senator Coons, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you, Chuck. Great to be on. So um, I assume a more narrow bill, like you heard from, from Congressman Hurd, if that somehow got through the House, that, that would get through the Senate rather easily. Um, it, 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 but what is the sticking point as far as you're concerned? I would hope it would. It's very encouraging to hear Congressman Hurd, who I know well, um, working so hard across the aisle with Congressman Aguiar to come up with a narrow and focused solution. Um, but frankly, what is the sticking point? The sticking point is we have a president uh, whose engagement, whose role here, um, shifted back and forth from welcoming and supportive and constructive last Tuesday when he hosted a bipartisan meeting in the White House kept it open to reporters and said, whatever you guys come back with, that's a deal I'll embrace, I'll take the heat. And then two days later, when Senators Graham and Durbin, a bipartisan group of six senators come back to report they've got a deal, the president blows it up. So if we knew that President Trump would take leadership here and would get us over the finish line with some deal, and we've got a good one here in the Senate that tees up border security, and a DACA fix, we could get this done. We've got several days. There is already a bipartisan deal yeah. on the table here in the Senate. I don't understand in this tale of two Trumps from last week why the president keeps going back and forth instead of showing leadership on this issue. Well, at what point do you no longer, do you trust the president? Um, well, the president um, was elected by the American people in part because he had some success in business. And while he and I differ on lots of issues, um, I have to be hopeful that he could still be successful as president. Getting this deal over the line, avoiding a government shutdown this Friday, keeping us moving mm -hmm. forward, that show real leadership. Uh, I believe he's interested in being a successful president. I'm puzzled at the number of times he's done what he did last Thursday um, and end up defeating something that just two days before he so openly encouraged and supported. If you don't get, if there's no movement on DACA this week, will you vote to keep the government open on Friday? Well, we shouldn't get to that point. None of us should be flirting with shutting the government down. But we are months overdue, Chuck, in addressing the Children's Health Insurance Program, disaster funding for Puerto Rico, for Florida, for Texas, dealing with the wildfires out west, with community health centers, and with a resolution to DACA. All of us, I think, are struggling to believe that there's going to be a deal here, but we've got several days. It is possible for leadership in the House and Senate and the White House to come to an agreement on an overarching deal. We should be getting that done. We should demonstrate to the world and our country yeah. that we can still get these deals done in the best interest of our nation. You just sounded like a senator who, who did not want to have, who wasn't willing to say, nope, not going to support any government funding bill if DACA hasn't been solved. That is not. For this Friday, that is not a deal breaker for you? It's what it sounded like to me, but correct me if I'm wrong. Chuck, we've still got enough time to get this done. And I don't want to give up hope yet that we will get this done. I've been here seven years. I have lived through far too many cliffhangers. And one of the things that makes it harder to get this done is when folks start drawing sharper and sharper lines in the sand. The president had a good bipartisan you're not there. deal presented you're not to him drawing, last Thursday. You're not ready to draw that line in the sand. No DACA deal, no budget vote from me, Chris Coons. Chuck, we should get a resolution to the DACA problem this week. We deserve the American people send us here to make responsible compromises. There's a DACA deal on the table. It should be part of a bigger package that keeps the government open. And I hope the president will seize this moment to lead a Republican Congress and a Republican White House in getting over the finish line with resolving all of these important issues, DACA central among them. I got two questions involving this meeting in the, between Senators Durbin, Graham, and Purdue and Cotton. Number one, do you think we should have ever heard that language? Do you think that was something that should have been leaked in the first place? You know, it, it is, of course, regrettable that the president swears. But it's not surprising that our president swears. Lots of people swear. I even swear on occasion. What's deeply regrettable is what he was swearing about and what it implied, suggesting in the rough and vulgar language he used that there are certain nations from which we don't want people. And there's other nations, mm -hmm. Nordic nations, from which we do want people, led to an inevitable conclusion that what he was saying was racist. 
and the timing and the context was right. particularly unfortunate. So you think, was, you think it's, it's important that we learn? Fight. It's, it's important think, that this went public. I think when a president is hosting a meeting that important, where mm -hmm. a bipartisan deal has been presented, mm -hmm. and where the motives spoken by the president for breaking the deal are that base, I can understand why certain uh, participants felt it important to be clear about why that deal wasn't embraced. Has your view of Senators Cotton and Purdue changed? I think it's really unfortunate that we've gotten into a mud pit of he said, he said, and senators accusing each other of being untruthful. Uh, it was really unconstructive uh, for them to then go on Sunday shows and go out publicly and accuse one senator of not being truthful, and then it turns into parsing about S House or S Hole. Or, I mean, this has been a really unconstructive couple of days. Who's being let down here? 800,000 dreamers, hundreds of millions of Americans, our reputation in the world. Um, if I were betting on whether the United States is able to overcome the challenges we face in the world, I'd be betting less in favor of America if I were one of our friends or adversaries around the world after this messy, disappointing incident. My hope is that in the next mm. couple of days, Chuck, we can save this and do a bipartisan deal that gets us moving forward again. All right. Senator Chris Coons, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Democrat from Delaware, thanks for coming on and sharing your views. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chuck.